What can surpass the grandeur of a royal coronation, where history, tradition and unabashed luxury converge? At the heart of one such spectacle is the newly crowned King Charles, a figure who has lived his entire life under the intense scrutiny of the public eye. Born into the British royal lineage, Charles has navigated the delicate balance of royal duty and personal identity, culminating in his eventual ascension to the throne. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Lux Underground. In this video we will discover the various aspects of this ceremony, which makes it so luxurious. But before we do that, like our video, subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to ensure that you don't miss any of our incredible content. Let's start. On May 6, 2023, the world's eyes were trained on London as the clock struck 11 a.m. It was a moment steeped in historical gravitas, as King Charles was to be crowned in a ceremony held at the revered Westminster Abbey. This significant event, watched by millions across the globe, was a testament to the enduring allure of the British monarchy. The guest list, a meticulously curated blend of royalty and distinguished public figures, reflected Charles's modern take on monarchy. Among the attendees were senior members of the royal family, including Prince William, Kate and their children. Notably, Prince George, at just nine years old, became the youngest heir to the throne ever to participate in his predecessor's coronation, serving as a page of honour for his grandfather. In a surprising yet respectful gesture, Prince Harry was present, despite recent family tensions. However, Meghan Markle stayed in the United States, as the day coincided with their son Archie's fourth birthday. Prince Andrew, despite his recent controversies, was also present alongside Charles's other siblings and their spouses. Additionally, the international monarchs and British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, along with his wife Akshata Murthy, added an extra layer of prestige to the event. Similarly, the presence of Camilla's children and their families, as well as 850 members of the public chosen for their charity work, showcased the inclusive vision of the monarchy under King Charles. Notably, the US was represented by First Lady Jill Biden, as per the tradition of US presidents not attending British coronations. But it wasn't just the venerated guests who attended the ceremony, who made this a spectacle in royal history. There were several other aspects of the coronation, which contributed to its opulence. The royal attire serves to be one of the factors which multiplied the luxuriousness of the coronation by manifold. Royal occasions put an emphasis on sartorial sophistication, as seen by the extravagant and lavish royal apparel. The departure from the traditional dress code, which usually demanded attendees to don grand robes and ceremonial attire, was one of the most noteworthy aspects of the event. Instead, guests were invited to adopt a more relaxed, contemporary look, an illustration of the evolving dynamics of royal customs. King Charles III epitomized regal elegance in his attire, he wore the crimson velvet robe of state, a garment steeped in history, originally donned by King George VI at his coronation in 1937. Its worth, reflecting its historical and cultural significance, is truly priceless. Paired with a crimson tunic, cream silk overshirt and royal navy trousers, the ensemble was the perfect blend of tradition and modernity. Queen Consort Camilla was equally radiant. Wearing a crimson robe originally made for Queen Elizabeth II in 1953, Underneath the robe, she wore a tailored dress by renowned British designer Bruce Oldfield, an outfit that subtly yet powerfully spoke of luxury and refinement. Notably, First Lady Jill Biden represented the US with style and grace in a periwinkle blue Ralph Lauren skirt suit, a brand synonymous with high-end fashion and elegance, accompanied by her granddaughter Finnegan Biden, who wore a chic pale yellow cape dress by Mark Arian. The duo's choice of attire was not only stylish, but also seemed to gesture a sartorial nod of solidarity with Ukraine. Their outfits, while not disclosed, are estimated to be valued at several thousands of dollars, adding to the luxurious atmosphere of the occasion. The coronation of a monarch is a splendid affair, and nowhere is this opulence more evident than in the display of the crown jewels. They are not just items of immeasurable worth, but also symbolize the monarchy's divine right to rule. At the heart of the collection lies the crown, a marvel of craftsmanship weighing approximately 2.2 kilograms. 
Its solid gold frame is adorned with rubies, amethysts, sapphires, garnet, topazes and tourmalines, with a velvet cap and ermine band adding to its magnificence. This crown replaced an original belief to date back to the 11th century reign of Edward the Confessor. In addition, the sovereign's scepter with cross carrying the world's largest colorless cut diamond. The Star of Africa is a sign of the monarch's temporal power. This scepter, with its legacy extending back to 1661, represents the enduring authority of the British monarchy. Complementing this is the sovereign's scepter with dove, representing the spiritual role of the monarch. Its gold rod, embellished with diamonds, rubies, emeralds, sapphires and spinels, is topped with an enameled dove symbolizing the Holy Ghost. The sovereign's orb, a golden globe with a cross encrusted with diamonds, emeralds, rubies, sapphires and pearls, emphasizing the Christian sovereignty of the monarchy, added further to the extravagance of this ceremony. Finally, the coronation ring, known as the Wedding Ring of England, composed of a sapphire with a ruby cross set in diamonds, symbolizes kingly dignity. These priceless jewels, steeped in history and tradition, undeniably add to the luxurious nature of the coronation. The gold state coach, a sign of the British monarchy's splendor, is an integral part of King Charles's coronation, further underscoring the ceremony's opulence. This iconic carriage, which played a prominent role in Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee pageant and King Charles III's coronation, is an epitome of the timeless allure of royal pageantry. Since its construction in 1762, the Gold State Coach has been a centerpiece of royal coronations, jubilees and major events, ferrying British monarchs in its splendid confines. The masterpiece was the brainchild of designer William Chambers and coachmaker Samuel Butler. Now, at 260 years old, it has played a part in every coronation since William IV's in 1831, each time adding to the regal spectacle of the event. The Gold State Coach's dimensions and intricacies are a testament to its glory. Spanning 7 metres in length and standing 3.6 metres tall, it weighs a staggering 4 tonnes. Given its historic value and substantial weight, the carriage is always drawn at a walking pace by a team of 8 horses, a spectacle in itself that accentuates the regal procession's slow, majestic pace. With its rich history and breathtaking craftsmanship, the Gold State Coach is more than a means of transportation. It is a moving monument to the enduring splendor of the British monarchy. Its display at the Royal Mews, Buckingham Palace's working stables, offers a tangible connection to the nation's royal history, making it a luxurious and awe-inspiring aspect of King Charles' coronation. The royal banquet following King Charles III's coronation provided a feast of regal proportions that was not only a testament to culinary excellence, but also a reflection of the king's values and preferences. With dishes echoing the king's commitment to an organic and climate-friendly diet, the banquet was a sumptuous affair that demonstrated a conscious and sustainable approach to gourmet dining. The piece de resistance of the banquet was the specially crafted coronation quiche, a bespoke dish aligned with King Charles's fondness for eggs, a blend of spinach, broad beans, cheese and tarragon. The coronation quiche was not merely a gastronomic delight, but also a symbol of the king's gastronomic preferences and his commitment to promoting a healthier and more sustainable food culture. It was aptly nicknamed Quiche Lorraine, with its crust made from lard, adding a touch of controversy to the otherwise wholesome dish. However, the royal chefs assured that store-bought crust could also suffice, demonstrating a practical approach to the recipe. The banquet's menu was a mix of gourmet dishes and everyday comfort food, combining luxury with simplicity. It ranged from sausage rolls, scones and finger sandwiches to more elaborate dishes like roasted rack of lamb with an Asian-style marinade, hard-shell shrimp tacos with pineapple salsa and grilled eggplant dressed with a mango chutney yogurt and curry powder sauce. This variety not only catered to a diverse palate, but also reflected the inclusivity of the royal kitchen. The table settings, meticulously arranged, added to the overall lavishness of the banquet, embodying the magnificence that is synonymous with royal occasions. Each detail, from the coronation quiche to the eclectic mix of dishes, underscored the significance of the event, 
making the royal banquet a luxurious highlight of King Charles's coronation. With this gastronomic extravaganza, the monarchy demonstrated how food, a universal language, could be used to express cultural values and royal traditions. The coronation of King Charles III was graced not only by the opulence of the ceremony itself, but also by the luxurious and meaningful gifts the king received. Each present had a rich symbolic meaning, and their value extended beyond mere monetary worth. Australia, in a gesture of environmental stewardship and reflection of the king's known commitment to nature conservation, made a donation of $10,000 to support the conservation of endangered parrots in Western Australia. This gift served as a testament to the importance of global environmental awareness and the role of leadership in fostering such efforts. Perhaps the most intriguing gift, however, was Majesté, a unique blend of tea crafted from a bush planted by the late Prince Philip, King Charles's father. The late royal had once joked with Jonathan Jones from Tregothnan Estate, the UK's largest tea plantation, about having his own tea bush in Sri Lanka. In response, Jones suggested Prince Philip plant a tea bush on his estate. Subsequently, in 2014, Prince Philip did plant such a bush, thus adding a personal touch to the royal estate. Though Prince Philip passed before the tea could mature, the estate staff harvested it to create a special blend for King Charles's coronation. This gift resonates with history and familial ties, making it a luxurious symbol of continuity and a heartfelt tribute to the late Prince Philip. The story of Majesté adds a layer of personal charm to the grandeur of the coronation, signifying how luxury can also be found in sentimental value and deep-rooted tradition. King Charles III's coronation was a lavish event that was rich in custom, unique flourishes, and glory that ranged from ceremonial gifts to attire. As we look forward to the reign of King Charles III, we are left wondering, how will this new era of monarchy continue to redefine the concept of royal luxury? Only time will tell. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. We'll be back soon.